Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Gamer Logic. I'm Mike Murtis and I am very proud to announce that this is the very first video I'm doing that actually features a Commodore 64 game. As you guys know, I recently picked up a Commodore 64 after much trouble. It finally arrived and this weekend I've been able to load a ton of different games into it and I've been able to recall some nostalgic memories of all these great Commodore 64 games that I used to play when I was just a small little kid and I'm talking like two to five years old. So I went through the list and I loaded up some games and I thought long and hard about what game I would pick first to review and the first game I decided to review is Raid Over Moscow. Now this game recalls tons of memories for me in the first place so I'll talk a little bit about my memories and then get into the review of the game. Now, Raid Over Moscow is actually one of those games that I can remember my dad playing a lot. And it was a difficult game because we had the Atari controllers back then, and that's what we used to control the Commodore 64. I mean, these days you can plug a Sega Genesis pad into it and play a lot of the games with really, really great control. But back then with the Atari joystick, it wasn't really easy to play certain games. And unfortunately, Raid Over Moscow took a little bit to get used to. And I can, again, recall being very little, and I remember this being probably one of the first games I saw my dad get really, really, really angry at. And I remember him trying to fly through the, the first part of the game, which you're in a space station and you're trying to pilot your ship out of the space station through a door. And you had to get to a certain height, and you had to hit the F7 key to get the door open, and if you didn't hurry up enough, the door would shut, but if you went too fast, you would crash. And, God, it used to piss him off so much. He used to say things and words that would make uh, the angry video game nerd blush. It, it's pretty funny thinking back about it. But, uh, you know, eventually I p picked it up and started playing through it. And uh, I was able to get decently far in it. And after a couple of years of playing it, we could get very close to the end. But I was never actually able to finish it. Uh, I actually finished it today, which I'm quite proud of. I got both the endings, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But uh, some really great memories with Raid Over Moscow. And I used to call it Raiders Over Moscow, I think, because Raiders of the Lost Ark was out around the same time. And uh, it's funny looking at it now because it's just Raid Over Moscow, obviously. Now, this game was actually released on a whole bunch of different computers back in the day. Uh, for the Atari computer, uh, the Apple II had it. I believe the Spectrum and a couple other computer systems had it. But the Commodore 64 version is the one I've played and have always known. So the basic premise of Raid Over Moscow is that uh, the Russians, because this is kind of a Cold War video game, has launched a nuclear missile at a certain city in the U.S. And it's up to these American space pilots to launch their ship out of a space station and attack the launch site at Moscow to get the missiles to kind of like dissipate and uh, lose their course to land on the United States. So, in order to do this, you eventually have to get out of your space station, get down to Moscow, fight through a certain area of Russia, actually, destroy the launch station, repeat it again from a couple of different missile attacks, and then eventually you make your raid over Moscow and into Moscow to destroy the nuclear reactor. Now, let's talk about the play control in this game. I talked a little bit about how hard it was to actually control your ship in the Atari joystick version of this. Uh, it's much easier to control with the Sega Genesis pad. I was able to, in the first portion, launch my ship, get it up, slowly turn it around, hit F7 on the Commodore, and fly it out. I mean, I remember my dad flying, trying to fly through that space station so many times and hitting the wall. It's just so much easier to do with a Sega Genesis controller than it is with an Atari stick or one of those old school sticks that you could use for an Atari or a Commodore. Sound and music. Unfortunately, there's not really a lot of music in this game, which is unfortunate because Commodore is known for its SID ship that has a lot of great songs with it. Uh, the sound effects they do use in the game, though, are pretty phenomenal considering that this game was released in 1984-1985. Uh, some really great piloting sounds uh, when your aircraft is taking off and getting ready to launch. The explosions are top-notch. Uh, when you're shooting your bazooka and hitting certain objects, it just gives a really full sound effect that sounds really, really good. So very, very high notches on the sound. Graphically, 
Okay, this was uh, an early game, but it looks better than Atari graphics, than something you'd see on like the Atari 2600. There's enough different graphics in the game and enough different areas in the game that it keeps you interested. Uh, there's a lot of things that are repeated, unfortunately, but because the game is so diverse, it actually gives you uh, a nice spectrum of different graphics that the Commodore can provide for you. Now let's talk about playability-wise. One of the great things about Raid Over Moscow is the fact that it has different gameplay segments. The first, obviously, being the space station, where you're trying to control your ship out of the space station and fly it out into space. Again, like I said, this was really difficult with the Atari stick, but a lot easier with the Sega Genesis pad. Now what was cool about this is the nuclear missile that's being launched towards the United States uh, you have anywhere between six and seven minutes to get your ships out. So you have a choice. You can either take one ship and go out to outer space and land in Russia, or you can get a whole bunch of your ships out, and if you happen to die in the next segment, instead of having to start all over again and fly one ship out of time, you can have backup ships, saving you some seconds, hopefully. Now once you get good enough at all these segments, you can really blow through the first three missile attack segments without having to get any ships out. I was able to do it after like two or three plays, but uh, it's a little bit of a challenge at first. The next segment is after you actually leave the space station and get back to the map screen, you go to attack the nuclear reactor or the missile launch area where the missile is coming from in Russia. This is kind of almost like a early shoot 'em up look. And you actually have uh, altitude you can do up and down, and you can move to the left and right. And the control scheme is a little weird for this, even with the actual Sega Genesis pad, but you get used to it fairly quickly. Um, there's objects you have to avoid both on the ground and in the air. They have missiles that basically home into your position, so if you get too high, you're going to be taken out instantly. But if you get too low, you're going to smack into ground objects. So you kind of got to watch where you're going. You're also being attacked by various things, and you can destroy various buildings. And eventually, once you get past the attack helicopter that is guarding it, you get to the actual launch station. In the launch station segment, you have six different buildings, or maybe it's five different buildings actually, that are all shooting at you, as well as uh, enemy jets that are trying to prevent you from blowing up the central command for the missile launch. Now, I remember playing this game originally and thinking I had to destroy all the buildings next to the center building before I could destroy the center building, and that's not the case at all. What you actually have to do is get to the correct altitude and when you do get to the correct altitude, your ship will turn a darker color. And this means that you're lined up with the turret and with the weak point to destroy the actual missile launch. Once you shoot that, it blows up. And regardless of hitting all the other buildings, if you did or not, depends if you want extra points, uh, you'll be successful and you'll go back in your space station and you'll repeat these first three segments again two more times. Now, after you're done doing this two more times, you then approach Moscow, which again with these... Uh, side-scrolling elements, these shoot 'em up elements, the layout, the geometry of all the enemies in the buildings, they're exactly the same, which may be disappointing to people now, but if you think back to 1984, that's not that bad. So this time when you're approaching Moscow, if you get through it, you then go into commando mode, where you approach the Kremlin. Now this is actually where they have the nuclear reactor that you're trying to destroy in Moscow, so they can't do any more missile attacks with you. You're in a trench, and you move your character from left to right, you have a bazooka, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to take out all the soldiers that are in the distance, as well as a tank, and find the entrance to the actual nuclear reactor. Now you can actually blow out pieces of the Kremlin, you can obviously attack different soldiers as well as the tanks, and you have to use your joystick or joypad to actually measure up your shots with where they're at. This can be kind of frustrating at first, but it's not that bad. So, if you go back to 1984, we obviously had no guides or anything, or because we pirated a lot of our Commodore games, apparently, uh, no instruction books. So we really couldn't figure out what you had to do to get past this segment. We would blow out all the pieces of the building and then shoot all the guys and figure that had to be 
how you get into the building. Well, that's actually not the point. What you got to do is destroy the doors that are on the front of the building, and the one that turns white is your entrance into the nuclear reactor. Once you clear out the soldiers and clear out the tank, you have a couple of seconds to shoot that white door again. And once you shoot it, you get into your next segment, which is the nuclear reactor. What you have to do is take out this little robot that is guarding the actual nuclear reactor and keeping it cool so nothing melts down. You have to hit this thing a couple times, and it's almost like discs of Tron in this element here. You throw your disc, it hits the wall and it bounces back, and you got to catch it. If you run into of actual discs, you got to start back at the commando part, which is really annoying. But uh, you got to line up your shots, destroy this robot, and when you destroy it, the reactor goes critical. An emergency attack robot comes out, and you have two minutes to take this thing out. At this point, if you don't defeat the robot, you get one of two endings. Moscow explodes because of the nuclear, nuclear reactor, the attacks stop, but none of the pilots make it out alive. If you do beat the robot, then you see the ending sequence changes with a ship flying out or a plane flying out, and it says that the pilot survived. So overall, what do I think about this game? Uh, you know, this was a nostalgic trip back to being such a little kid, and it really made me happy to see that uh, playing this game so much as a little kid, I knew it was a good game when I was a little kid, and it's nice to know that almost like 20 years later, it's still a great game, and I still love it. Uh, definitely one of the finer games on the Commodore 64. Emulate it or go get a Commodore 64 and at least give this game a try. I'd give Raid Over Moscow or Raiders Over Moscow a 5 out of 5. Look forward to more Commodore reviews soon. I'm going to play some more of this great game. Peace, guys.